Hi friends, oh, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be working on the side of the greenhouse. We're gonna be adding some annuals for some color for the season. It's already decked out with perennials and shrubs from Clarence from last year. So we created that bed on the side last year where we planted some little limes from Clarence, some totem pole grasses from Clarence, and also some butterfly bushes from Clarence, yes. And then this season we connected the bed and extended the bed, oops, sorry with the camera moving. We connected the bed towards the end of the greenhouse like a half moon shape so, so now i'm getting ready to add some annuals for some color and some interest for the season like these plants they need to be planted like immediately i am tired of hand watering at this point um because it's getting so hot during the day and they're drying out extremely fast so it's time for them to go in the ground and also i need to run drip in this area as well and get everything <clears throat> excuse me ready to go for the season so let me show you all the plants that i think is going to do pretty amazing look absolutely gorgeous this season and uh, overall stunning okay stunning i think all the colors are going to play well together so i'm excited i'm excited so let me show you okay so this half moon remember this half moon bed that we created right earlier in the season and we transplanted the hookahs we transplanted about four they are large and happy we also have the lamb's ear and in the back i have six color blaze what is this golden dreams coleus i want to add in the back for some height and some color eventually i would like to add a plant or two back here that is chartreuse in color to give me some brightness back here because the hookahs are so dark. I want something bright back here. It could be evergreen or it could be a deciduous shrub, but it cannot get no more than three feet tall, two and a half, three feet at the most, because this window here needs to be able to swing out. All right, so that's what we have there. And you're looking a little bit, you know, <laughs> because they need to be planted and get out their containers moving on up into the original part of the bed that was created last year we have a little lime which is doing amazing so i have four in this bed and it goes all the way up there and then in between the little limes i have these totem pole grasses and in front of the totem pole grasses we have these uh Pugster periwinkle butterfly bushes. They get two by two. This is their mature size at this point. And I'm excited about that. So the total pole grasses get six feet tall, but they only get like a foot in width. They don't, they don't, they're great for small spaces. You can tuck them in wherever. Grasses give so much movement and texture and dimension to the space. So I have three of them. All right. So in the front, in front of all of the little limes, I am thinking, uh, this is the Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow. This is a mini Vista, and I think the first yellow, no, Supertunia Honey is yellowish with like peach color. But this is a Vista, and it's a yellow. But the blooms are much smaller than your typical Vistas. So in front of each little lime, I have three of those. And then in between each of the little limes, side by side, I'm thinking some luscious blend uh, berry lantana just to tie in the yellows and the pinkish orange, you know, and then the yellow would, good, would look good with the purple of this butterfly bush. So that's what I have repeated all the way down. Then on the fence line, by the way, we are still working. We're creating some garden beds here and also making space for a fountain inside of there. So once we get all that together, you guys will get a tour of that area. So for the fence line, last year I planted this beautiful black eye Susan and it took over. It was so happy in the space and I want to repeat it again, friends. But this time, instead of the yellow one, I want to plant this one. This I think this is a lemon slice appeal or a tangerine appeal. This one is orange with black throat and yellow, like a yellow veins on the outside. And I just think, I just know it's going to look great. So I have one there. And one up here. And all I need is two because they they are aggressive here. I only planted one yellow one last season and it literally took over the fence. So I'm thinking two is more than sufficient to fill all of this up, friends. And I'm really, really excited. So I have the same thing planted here 
the yellow vistas in front of all of the little limes because they need more water with the hydrangeas. Butterfly bush, they don't like wet feet, so I don't have anything in front of them. And the way I'm going to run the drip line, there won't be any water ran towards the butterfly bush. They'll get excess water from the plants around them, if that makes sense. So they should be happy. Because right now there is no drip in here, and when I water everything else, I do not water my butterfly bushes, and they're still happy. Look at this, beautiful, it's already budded up as well. So that's what we're gonna do with this bed. Also, I need to clean up the pathway. I need to remove these extra rocks, clean up these tulip bulbs and put them in the compost pile. So with the tulips, those tulips are not Doran hybrid tulips. Those are the only tulips that hybridize or sorry, that naturalize in my garden. So I leave those. The other tulips that aren't a Doran hybrid, they never come back for me here in zone seven. Each zone is different and also we could be in the same, same zone but our microclimate is totally different. They don't come back. So I treat them as annuals. Plus those are the tulips I bought in Chicago last year for a dollar per bag. Um, so I just pulled them out and I left them there for days. They should have went into the compost pile but I got distracted with other things. Blah, 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 blah. They're still there so I'm gonna clean them up and get them situated into the compost bin and i'm going to run my lawn more in that area i also have the soil and i finally have the grass seed for that area so i can put in the, the grass and it doesn't look so bare and patchy it's just so much to do and it's just not enough days not enough hours in the day to get everything done and by the time i'm done with these kids by the time my crotch monsters go to bed friends i am tired i'm exhausted i don't even want to come outside I So friends, I got everything planted and watered. Only thing left to do is to run drip and mulch. And then we are done with this side bed. And then I have to clean up the mess, the pathway, and reseed, water it in. And hopefully we have some grass within the next three to four weeks. Uh, so let me show you how everything looks. I am loving the colors already, okay? I am loving the colors already. I just know the space is gonna look amazing. Well, let's start off where we started. We planted the Color Blaze Coleus, oh, what is it again? Uh, golden Dreams, yes, Golden Dreams. I just love how the Coleus, let's get in on it, let's give it a face shot, uh-huh. I just love how the Coleus picks up the burgundy, the dark color of the Hukra slash Corabels in its leaves. And then you have this, you still have the green, the chartreuse. So when they get um, pretty tall, they can get about, I think, 36 to 40 inches tall. They should be tall enough. This area is currently in shade. It gets morning sun and then it's in shade from about midday until the rest of the day. So I don't expect them to get extremely tall where the window cannot open, but just tall it enough to give me layers in this space. Gorgeous, gorgeous, so I planted six. Okay, so moving on up. All right, so here we planted the Super Tuna Mini Vista Yellow. Now I'm thinking they get about six to 12 inches tall, right? And they spread about, I don't know. I'm not quite sure how far these can spread. These are the, even though they're a Vista, they might perform differently. This is the first time in the garden, so I planted three. They're about a foot and a half from each other. 
ish um so i planted three here maybe i could have used two but we shall see how they perform throughout the season i just want a big mound of beautiful yellow trailing over the rocks and just just looking absolutely amazing and then right here we have the lantana now the lantana gets about 20 to 30 inches tall um so it should get about the height of what the limelight i'm sorry the little lime is so that should be a nice beautiful burst of color right there so i have one there and also one in here and one on the other side here and continue all the way down here we have the super tuna mini vist mini vist <laughs> super tuna mini vista yellow yeah again and it continue on in front of all of the little limes going up um so this right here the butterfly bushes they bloom that beautiful purple blue color so i just think the yellow and the purple color is just going to look amazing once these are in bloom so that's why i chose the yellow mini vistas in the front of this bed so when everything is burst and full of color it's just going to be it's going to be like a bag of skittles it's just going to be so beautiful look at this bloom right here on the lantana gorgeous look at all those colors the pink the yellow the orange just beautiful and we have them repeated along this bed so this bed is about 25 feet long and when you have a bed like this i just think it's best to mass plant the same thing and repeat it it makes more of a dramatic impact it feels good to get all those plants in ground i don't have to worry about them once i run the drip today uh, so the only thing i have to do is to run drip and put down mulch as i mentioned before this bed is about 25 feet maybe a little bit more than that give and take. So with a bed that's long, I try to keep everything in the same family. I try to repeat the same things because I just feel like it makes a bigger impact when you repeat the same plants. So when everything is in bloom together, it just makes like, wow, like a dramatic effect in your face. So with the butterfly bushes, I have the butterfly bushes in the front, the limelights in the middle, the totem pole a little bit towards the back, and then all the annuals disperse. I repeated the same thing, the same annuals um, all the way down, except the coleus. The coleus are just in the, their own little corner. However, the coleus does tie in with the lime, with the lime green yellowish, picks up the yellow with the mini vistas. Um, I just think it's gonna look amazing. I just know it's going to look amazing. The colors are fabulous together and it's going to be bursting with color soon. They just need some more time and fertilization. Don't forget to fertilize. If you cannot fertilize once a week, maybe try every two weeks. I personally don't fertilize every week because I don't remember. Even if I set a reminder in my phone, I just have too much going on to fertilize every week. <clears throat> so I, I try my best to fertilize every week it has always happened it's what it is so i'm going to start running the drip and running the mulch i'm a little bit short on time where's my phone i have to get the kids from school in about 30 minutes so i'm going to start the drip and then pause and come back mom life I, when it comes to drip irrigation, I'm over it. It's needed and it's, it's, it makes life much easier in the garden, but to run it and to connect this and connect that and make sure everything is watered, make sure the water is spaced like equally and all the plants, the root system are getting watered. I'm over it, okay, but it's done. So the drip tube is in, okay, honey, it is in. So let me show you what I did. So this drip tube, it has holes every 18 inches. I should have bought the one with holes every 12 inches. Um, 
so what I did, I went in with these couplers. These couplers right here, they can turn. It's like a valve. You can turn it on and off. And when the water comes out, it shoots out. So it covers this whole area. So both these two will be covered and I don't have to worry about if they're getting enough water or not. Um, I went around and I put them in, in the middle of every one of the holes. So 18 inches. So every nine inches, I put one in. Also, uh, down here, what I'm going to do down here, so this is the entry point for the tube. I'm going to put on a, a hose bib on here so I can connect the hose until we put on the, sorry, ah! until we put on the gutters. Once we put the gutters on, we're going to have a pipe that comes down into a drum to collect water, and then I'm going to hook up a pump to this piece of hose and going to use the rainwater to water this whole bed so anyway i have everything i tweak it all the way around i even brought it around this way in the front back in here then it runs all the way to the back and then right here it comes around to the front now with these super bells here in the front these are just super tunia vinnie mr yellow super tunia mini vista yellow yes um so the holes are every 18 inches so this one is directly in front of a hole there's a hole right here behind that one and there's a hole close to the root wall right there so i, I was not worried about this area is going to get sufficient water there is no holes by the root wall of the butterfly bush i did the same thing in the back as well i put a drip emitter close to all the root wall of the plants where there is not a hole by the emitter so everything everything is covered okay everything is covered now i'm a little bit worried about these lantana there are no drip tubing beside them directly on them but the soil is going to be so moist from all the excess water i think they should be fine we shall see if if they start to wilt. If I see that they're wilting and they're not getting enough water, I'm going to run a pipe, a small drip pipe directly to them and get that situated. Here we have the black eyed Susan vine already started to climb. Well, I trained it, I already started to train it up the fence and I cannot wait to see this in a couple of weeks, how it does. I'm just really, really excited to see this whole fence covered in these beautiful blooms. So this is what I notice. Whenever I start a project lately, it takes me multiple days to get it finished because I have to stop throughout to be a mom, to do mom things, um, and just to handle my business. So I am pushing it right now. The only thing left to do is mulch. I'm gonna see if two wheelbarrows of mulch is enough to get this done. It should not take me a long time. So I'm gonna try to do that and get that out of the way and wrap this project up so I, I don't have to come back to this. I don't wanna come back to this at all because I have so many more things to do. Let's see. I got it done. I got the mulch in. I got the drip. First of all, I got the drip in. And I got the mulch in. In between, and picking the kids up from school, cooking dinner, and doing homework. Okay? Super mom over here. Um, I got it. I got it done. Now, the black mulch looks amazing. It looks so good. However, I'm going to get up close and show you guys. I did not put the mulch too close to the plant. I try to stay away, stay away about two to three inches, give or take, around the base. Because when you put the mulch too close to the base of the plant, that causes um, retention of too much moisture. Because mulch is supposed to help retain moisture. You can retain too much moisture and then you, it causes root rot. And then that invites bacteria and diseases and then your plants they start to wilt and you don't know why they're dying that's one of the main reason why your petunias or any kind of annuals die when the mulch is too close to the base and then you're trying to figure out like my plants are wilting but they're in full sun and i water them every day what's going on that's one of the main reason why the mulch is too close to the base now did i say it looked amazing because it looks amazing. I'm just so proud of myself that I finally, I'm done with this area. I don't have to come back to this space, okay? And that is one of the reasons why I'm so excited. Because lately with, with the kids and graduation and the end of the school year and all the parties and all the play dates and, and all the doctor's appointments and, and everything that's happening, oh God, my head hurts just thinking about it. One project that could take me like two to three hours out of the day takes me two to three days. You get what I'm saying? And if I record it, that's like two to three days process. And then it takes me like a week to record and get the video out to you guys. 
life is just life in right now friends but anyway let's get back to the bed let me get let me give you guys an up close shot of everything because your girl is happy okay <sighs> friends the black mulch look just it just looks so good so amazing so let's get in close as you can see i try to stay about two to three inches this is about two inches away from the base of the plant with the mulch you know once the plant fills in you won't be able to see that gap between the mulch and the soil it's going to cover that up so i'm not really worried right now give it a week or two and it's going to fill in i'm also going to go in and clip I'm going to trim them because they are a little bit leggy and I want them to be a little bit more bushier. But friends, besides that, look at it. Those alliums are supposed to be much taller. This is your first season. I don't know what's going on with that, but okay, we're not worried about that. Everything looks so good. I am loving it. So now that this space is wrapped up, I can move on to something else. And yeah, and down here, I'm really excited about this corner down here with the color blaze colia. So I ran out of mulch. I need to go across the street and pick up another half a wheelbarrow to just top dress this area because you can still see the drip tubes. But the fresh mulch and the, the, the chartreuse color, friends, the chartreuse color with the dark burgundy of the leaves, the dark green, the dark purple looks really good, doesn't it? Like, look at that, gorgeous, just gorgeous. Um, so this fall, I'm gonna keep my eyes out for something chartreuse, either evergreen or um, a shrub. I don't mind a shrub, I just need to stay around two, two and a half feet, maybe three feet max, because that window needs to be able to open. But friends, this area is wrapped up, okay? Once we mulch and once we get the, the gutters on and the drum, to feed and you know water this whole bed that's it i'm in no rush for the drum uh but we're gonna get that wrapped up little by little one thing at a time but this bed is planted up for the summer for the season and it's ready to go friends also i came in here with the weed eater the weed whacker whatever you call it and i trimmed the uh the area as low as possible and i raked it up so i'm going to come in after i put the kids to bed i'm going to come in with some topsoil spread the topsoil about an inch or two thick and then i'm put down some grass seed and water it in i'm going to put up some signs so the kids know not to come back here for a week or two not to run on this area i'm going to block it off so we can have a grass pathway and you know get it together but honey look at all this i am loving it the yellow just looks so good against the black so once everything starts to bloom it's going to be amazing it's about 7 45 right now almost eight o'clock at night so i need to get inside and get the kids situated for bed um they do have school tomorrow so luckily i already did homework with them they already had dinner and I came back out here to finish this up so we got everything completed and i am so excited um so that's it for this video friends i'll see you guys in another video i don't know when i'm not making any promises but i'm doing my best to keep you guys updated on what's going on in the garden space so uh, thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye